Hey everybody, John Pluskini here. I'm still in too much pain to appear on video, but uh, I can record a podcast to ease my suffering. So I was just listening to Stefan Molyneux and Vox Day's new interview, Why Capitalism Works. And it's an interesting discussion, as it always is with them, but there actually isn't very much about why the free market works so well. It was mostly a collection of anecdotes about Vox Day's company and Stefan's podcast and explanations of individual good patterns of human behavior that arise from the free market. All really good info, and it's a good discussion to have, but I was disappointed. I wanted that attempt to really explain why it works so well, and uh, that's really not what they were trying to accomplish, and it's probably because I don't think that they know the exact reason. Uh, maybe they haven't given it that much thought, or maybe it's just because they haven't read my upcoming book, Mimetic Warfare, though they can't. I haven't finished writing it yet. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain some of the concepts from my chapter on the free market in the book, because uh, this explains why the free market is so efficient and why it's so much more pleasant than other methods of organizing society. And that reason has nothing to do with Austrian economics. It has to do with evolutionary biology. Because as I explained in my video about the science of mimetics, evolution is an algorithm. It isn't some mystic concept that only applies to living creatures. Any system where objects replicate themselves and there's some variation and then selection, the environment will, as a result, just um, become filled with the objects that replicate themselves the most efficiently, the ones that replicate themselves the most. Now, biology gives us a big, fascinating, beautiful example of how this simple process results in an incredibly diverse ecosystem of objects that interact with each other in fascinating ways. Predator and prey relationships, symbiotic relationships, parasitic relationships. And we see this anywhere that natural selection is observed. Now, in my memetics video, I explained the science of memetics as a theory of human mental content. To look at the spreading of human ideas and human thought as a replicating system that's subject to natural selection. So think of the big, diverse ecosystem of human ideas and patterns of behavior that we observe on Earth. Now, I'll link to the video in the description if you want to check that out. And you might, ex you might understand what I'm about to explain a little bit better if you do, but I think you'll be able to make it if you don't. So the free market is another evolving, replicating system that's at work here on Earth. And once I got into this mode of thinking where I started looking for them, this was the first replicator that I spotted. And you probably already see the outline of it, too. We clearly have a vast and complex ecosystem of businesses competing and parasitizing and predating and symbiotically working together. But it took me a while to figure out what's actually being replicated and what the selection is for. It's actually a little bit tricky, but here it is for free. What's being replicated is the customer experience. That's what's actually trying to reproduce. A business at any scale wants as many customers coming back as often as possible. And so that's where we see our replication and our variation. So what's the selection? You might be tempted to think that the selection is for what makes the most money for the business owners, right? That was my first guess, but I don't think that it is. Because a business with a better product that's cheaper or that provides a better user experience will shred a, a big, slow corporation that can't please its customers, even if the, uh, the newer company has a smaller profit margin. So the selection is actually for satisfying the customer. The business that provides the most satisfying experience will win out in the end. The best deal, the best product, the best price. But satisfaction here is a subjective term and an amoral one, because natural selection is always amoral. So for those of you who are already panicking and talking about how the selection pressure can't be on satisfaction because companies like Comcast exist that treat their customers like crap. Well, let's examine that because companies like Comcast are meme plexes. They're patterns of human behavior that have evolved over time, like religions or nation states. Because um, within the free market, we now have three layers of natural selection. Genetic natural selection has given us human beings. Then mimetic natural selection gives us human thought, and then free, the free market gives us the, the evolution of the competition within the free market. So is that frenetic, freemetic evolution? Did I just invent freems like memes and genes? We now have freems in the free market. No, that's really ugly. But it is exactly the same kind of concept, though. You can think of companies as organisms trying to survive in an environment, and there are environmental hazards in this case. Artificial barriers of entry to starting a new internet service provider. So if you tried to go run cables to people's homes and sell them, uh, sell them the internet, 
then you would be shut out by a miserable labyrinth of red tape and regulations and political obstacles unique to every single town that you try to operate in. You'll be bribing new political figures and so on. So memeplexes, organisms like Comcast, are what evolved to survive in this harsh environment where your small business can't. Think of desert animals. They tend to be kind of weird looking. They're not very friendly. They got big claws and fangs and venom, and it's because they're clinging to life in a really harsh environment. And Comcast is like that. It not only survived the status obstacles, now it thrives on them because these few big companies are the only ones who are able to offer any kind of user experience, and they can bend you right over and you have nowhere else to go. And if you go to the government and demand that they rein in these big evil corporations... And they just bribe the politicians to make the laws favor the big corporations and put even more obstacles in front of smaller, more nimble and more satisfying competitors, which would otherwise quickly evolve. Because, of course, animals will change their environment when they can to get a leg up, just like beavers will build a dam. Humans will build dams. It's the same kind of thing. So Comcast is a product of its environment, like any organism, like any meme, like a song that gets stuck in your head. They're all constructs that evolve through natural selection. And once you start to think of them that way, you realize that they behave in really similar ways. And it gives you these really fascinating, uh, outside-the-box ways of thinking about, um, about the world. And what you see here is that the more free the market is, the more satisfying the experiences can be. Because the violence and corruption and greed and waste and fraud of the state are like environmental hazards that interfere with the selection process. But just like how in Jurassic Park, life will find a way, and that can be a little bit misleading. You know, you can it can make you think that that uh, some amount of state meddling in the economy is necessary because at the end of the day, though, people are always going to find some way to come together and work, and the state just gets in the way. And if the competition of the free market seems ruthless and horrible and evil, compare it to competition directly in nature. Because do you want to work for a company that gets bought out and you might get laid off? Or do you want to be eaten alive? Literally. And that's all I got. So thanks for listening. It's a harsh world out there, my friends. Keep thinking.